Hello and welcome to the Lost Guys Island Creator. I have not figured out everything yet, but I had some experience with the Worlds Adrift Island Creator and I'm happy to share my knowledge. Okay, let's get into it. The play tab will let you check out islands made by other players. Or maybe some of these are made by Bossa. I've heard people pronounce it Bosa, but to me Bossa sounds much cooler. Anyway, back to the main screen. Create will let you set up your island. Right now I can only do Saborian. No clue how to unlock Kiyoki. If you do, please tell me in the comments. I'm dying to know. Especially if you know how to unlock desert. I would love to make a Badlands Island. We'll do temperate, outskirts, I guess, and there we go. Okay, let's look at the controls. Hold Alt and the left mouse button will rotate the camera. Scroll wheel zooms in and out. F seems to focus on a target. Holding right click enables this first person fly mode where you use WASD to move around, shift to go faster, E goes up, Q goes down. Now you probably notice these little tabs in the upper left here. I usually move through them left to right. First one is the terrain tab. It will let you place shapes that auto generate into an island when you click generate. Moving these sliders basically affects the smoothness of your island. Let's place a few more generators so you get a basic idea of how this will create the rough shape of the islands. You can also place these subtractive generators to make canyons, caves, or whatever. You can just click off this first tab if you want to hide the generators. Always remember to save. I don't think there's any form of autosave, so remember to back up your work. The sculpting tab does just what you think. Carve. This will carve out a chunk of the island. Up here you can control the radius, which is how big your cursor is, and power is the strength of the tool. Pretty self-explanatory. Add will dump terrain wherever you hold the mouse button. Smooth is like a much less aggressive version of Carve. I think it's trying to average out the geometry in that area. Now flatten is very interesting. You can select this plane and move it to wherever you want, then hold left mouse button, move it around and it will flatten all terrain to reach this grid surface. I just realized I forgot a few hotkeys. When you have an object selected, it brings up these options right here. W is for the move tool. E will switch to rotate. And R is for scaling. Also, Z or Control Z will undo. Now I want to direct your attention to this button that looks like a sun peeking out from behind the clouds. This will control time of day. So if it gets dark, you can just switch it back to morning. These seem to control how fast the day goes by. I see this little pause symbol right here and I just want to pause it so it never gets dark, but that doesn't seem to work for me. Okay, back over here on the third tab, post process, fix seams sounds like it would fix the texture seams. Correction. While I was making the island for the thumbnail, I found a weird crack which lets you see into the island and through it. Fix seams patched it right up. Smooth all removes jagged or rough geometry and this button over here, remove orphans. Um, let's see if I can find any. Never mind, I'll try to make one. It's kind of like a small tiny chunk of islands that's usually hard to notice and no one wants. Hence the name. The material tab will let you paint or fill textures. Paintbrush will let you hand paint where the textures go. A tip for selecting the different materials is, if you click the picture icon, it will let you change the actual material which affects this subsurface scattering thing that it does. <laughs> I don't really want that, and I don't know why I clicked OK, just ignore that. What you want is to click the name. See how now it's faintly blue? Seems backward to me, but whatever. Whoa, there's my first crash. Now that I've loaded the game back up, I see some things have reverted, so make sure to save often. 
Eraser will erase the material you have selected. Looks like this top one is the base material and you can't remove it. You've got to paint over it. The paint bucket fills the whole island with one material. Gross. Let's undo that. There. Now you can make your incredible Hulk fan art. The object tab is just what you expect. A whole bunch of folders full of objects you can place in your scene. Paintbrush adds them. Uh, make sure to check out this box. Turn off surface line if you want stuff straight up. Turn off randomized rotation if you want stuff to line up. There's tons of objects to try out. Only thing is you can't tell the size from the icon. The thing could be tiny or huge. The eraser erases stuff. Mass place lets you place a bunch of one thing at a time. Let's try bushes, I guess. What the hell? Only 10? Uh, what about 66? Much better. Now, um, I guess let's try this random block. That's pretty cool. But let's do 20-ish. This tab that looks like the Discord icon lets you place puzzle stuff. Arc? What's this thing? Oh, I bet this is where you very first load into the game. This seems like a good time to show this. The button with the eye and the little running dude will let you test out your levels. While drop character is highlighted, click in your world to spawn your character. WASD moves, space jumps, and pulls out your glider. Q or mouse 4 shoots your grapple. F does a quick reel-in thing while your grapple is attached. Escape twice will get you back to building. It does not look like there's fall damage. Datapad and Ragdoll relate to the physics objects. I think. I couldn't figure that part out. Let's skip to the bottom real quick and look at the rewards. If it's anything like Worlds Adrift, and I'm not saying it is, because I didn't get into the test group so I have no clue, but in the old game, the most important thing you were looking for were these knowledge tanks. So usually they are hidden at the end of a puzzle or something. This one looks like the good chest, has a chance for the best stuff. This one is a components trunk. Here's a small crate and a weapons locker. I think this last one is new. Loot Ruins usually has junk metal or salvageables. Under player challenges, there's this thing called data strands where you place this cool spiky thing. Then you use it to place these glowing ball orbs. In game, you activate the beacon, then run through the balls to complete the challenge. Easy enough, but I can't figure out how to hook it to anything. Same thing with the target shooting. Place the base and the shooting targets, but not sure what to plug it into. I'm going to set up another small staging area. Here's a puzzle door. My one complaint is the place and edit tabs look too similar. I wish there was a color change or some visual way to know I'm not in place mode. Anyway, here's a basic switch. Now use the edit tab to drag a line from the switch output to the door input. You'll know you did it right if the door closes. All right, let's test it. Push E on the switch and the door opens, perfect. Let's try two switches. Hmm, that doesn't seem to work. This one doesn't even light up until the first switch is activated. Maybe if I chain them together like this. That's a little better, but not really what I want. Let's try it with the shooting buttons. Same thing. I should have known. It does make more sense with this kind of switch, but it's still wrong. I tried chaining them together with the lights to get more information. Not really. Then, this is the moment it all starts to click together. 
the two circles. One is input and the other is output. Selecting the object will show what is plugged into what. What? Door closed? That's a good sign. Woo! Let's try two switches now. Uh, what's happening? Oh, I need bullets. R is reload. Selecting an object and using this menu is an easy way to delete the connections. Nice. Three switches works too. This looks like some kind of energy door. Looks awesome. It seems backwards from the other door. Maybe there's a reversing node somewhere. I ended up finding it later. There's a button here that tells the object what to do when all the inputs are complete. Activate or deactivate. I'm going to save just in case. I really want to figure out this relay puzzle. This one looks so cool. If you place one of these puzzle objects, there's a tooltip over here that hints at its purpose. Through the same menu, we can add the subcomponents. This one is a receiver, so it's where the laser will end. Now a few of these turning nodes. Okay, let's see what this does. We turn these to redirect the laser. Okay, simple enough. Now, how to hook it up. You would think there would be connections here on the receiver. Well, this is the only option. Oh, oh, the door shut. Turn, turn. Wait, did that actually work? Let me move this so I could see the door. What? I guess as long as the laser reaches its target, you don't need to use all the components. That's so cool. Here's a good example of center pivot. If this box isn't highlighted, then all the selected objects will rotate and scale from their own individual coordinates. Click it and then they all operate from the group center position. Let's try the monolith. Looks like we place these arrow things that need to be rotated towards a certain position. Okay, this green line is the target direction. Control D will duplicate. If you select the main monolith, you can change the rotation of the others. Now let's get in game. How do you rotate this? Grapple? I mean, that seems logical. Hmm, no, well in doubt. Die, inanimate object. What? Wait a second, that, that worked? Yes, yes. Let's try it with two. Oh, kick ass. Okay, pylon puzzle. Let's see what you're all about. We are supposed to grapple the generator and then wrap the electric cord around the pylons. Uh, let's add a couple and then move them out a bit. All right, let's try it. <laughs> um, oh, I need to use control and reel out. Sweet. Man, all these are so cool. Mr. Data Drone, you are next. Um, looking at this thing, it sounds like a little drone leads you to a door or something. Drop a few of these path nodes and jump into game. Well, where's a little drone? Well, shooting didn't work this time. What am I missing? I'll add a door so I can see if it's working. Hmm, still no. Maybe I'll try following the path. Oh, who's this little guy? Oh, uh, of course, it's at the end, duh. Well, look at that. Neat. I will now briefly show the island from the thumbnail and mention a few things. See this red bar at the top that says 14%? This represents the island complexity. The maximum is 100%. So try to consider all the assets you're putting into your build. Here's a couple of the cooler things I managed to include. This small dock came out pretty good. Uh, 
Um, this is a small campsite I just kind of threw together. I think that pile of rocks back there was floating. This giant wing statue was going to be a placeholder, but I kind of like it now. It looks good there. The grappling hook is a powerful tool. Remember to add some verticality to your designs. Here, under the main structure, a data bank is hidden. Down this cave is a chest. There could be a lot more details. Once you have everything the way you like it, you can click this Upload Island button. This will upload your build to the Steam Workshop. You want to click Upload as New unless you're updating one of your creations. Here you can name it and pick a better thumbnail. Push spacebar when you're done, maybe even a description, and then click Upload. Well, that's everything I had the chance to test out. I hope it was helpful. If you have any tips I missed, please comment them below. I was going to end with building a small island start to finish, but I'll save that for my next video. I want to thank you for watching. Good luck with all your creations and have a good one.